Welcome to Film Music Mentor. Today's topic, four music moves that inevitably lead to failure. Four music moves that inevitably lead to failure. Again, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, but there are four moves that I see over and over again with filmmakers, and sometimes they're new filmmakers on their first project, and sometimes they're, sometimes they've done many projects, or sometimes they're actors that have been in many, many, many um, shows and movies, and they decide to write and produce something, and they make these errors, and I want to save you from, from, these, uh, from these mistakes. So, number one, the music that you like, personally, may not be appropriate for your film. So we all listen to music for different reasons. We we want to listen to certain music uh, driving, certain music in the gym, certain music to relax, certain music to uh, to do our laundry. Whatever it is, we like music for different reasons, and we cannot confuse who we are as people um, with who our characters are. Especially if this is autobiographical, and you feel that the character is you. The character that comes off on screen is going to be a different version of you. And what you like personally, musically, may have nothing to do with how this character comes off on screen to an audience. So it's very important to separate who you are from who this character is. Once you write this, shoot this, edit this, and get ready to uh, go into the post-production, this character, even if they're based on you, is not you any longer and has a different set of needs, musically speaking, than you might in your actual day-to-day -day life. So this is a huge mistake. Once again, the music that you personally like may not be appropriate for your film. Number two, choosing your music prematurely. So many times I hear I was writing the script and I was listening to this song and that song and this album. So in our own minds, there's a connectivity because everything we like has something to do with us, right? But in a film, it won't translate. It may, but mostly it won't translate. So it's really important to take your film for what it is when it's finished. So you don't know what's going to work in a film until the thing is cut. Until there's a final cut, you don't know what kind of music is going to interfere with the dialogue. You don't know what kind of music is going to create the right pacing. You may have some ideas. And in your head, you may have written or you may be reading the script and directing. And you may have this whole plan on how everything's going to turn out. But I promise you it'll be different when you actually edit it. When you edit it, cut it, and it's there, the film will have different rhythms than it had in your mind. And you need to be able to separate whatever you thought before with the reality that you have at hand, which is your final cut. So again, don't choose music prematurely. You can have ideas, and if listening to music or thinking about music or talking about music helps you get through the process of writing, um, directing, producing, editing, that's all fine. Do whatever you got to do to get the job done. It's a tough job in any um, position working on a film. So again, it's important to remember, don't choose your music prematurely. And if you do, be open and be flexible, okay? Because the movie in your mind is not what's going to be uh, in your final cut. Three, you get someone who's a friend because they're a great musician. This happens all the time. Um, my friend's going to score the film. I got this great friend of mine. He's a great guitarist. My, my buddy's a drummer and does all these really cool things with beats. Um, my friend's a rapper. All these things. Just because someone's a musician does not make them a film composer. In fact, uh, it often fails. You have your friend work on all this stuff and it doesn't work. And you're either stuck with it because you can't tell them or you end up having this very difficult decision of saying, listen, uh, I got to tell my friend that the music's not working out and, uh, you know, they just don't have the skill set to do this kind of work. And then you have to go get someone else and you got to get someone who knows what they're doing and it could be a hidden cost. So know from the beginning, don't hire your friend because they're your friend and they're a musician. Hire someone that knows what they're doing. Now, every film composer has to score their first film. And if you know that you have a friend that's a great musician and they're going to score their first film um, and that's going to be your film... Give yourself some time to make mistakes and have discussions and um, fail a few times before you can expect to nail, um, nail it right away. And you may get aspects of the score, but if this is a feature film or even a long short of 15, 20 minutes, uh, it's unlikely that someone that's never done this before is going to just nail it. So remember that. 
just because someone's a musician does not make them a film composer. And you should look for someone who knows what they're doing. All right. Finally, going through the musical process, what's obvious to you may not be obvious to other people. Let's say you've written this. Let's say you're directing it. Whatever it is, you directed it, you acted in it, whatever your roles are in this production, there's a certain amount of knowledge that you have about the characters, about the story, that you um, that you ingest through the reading and the writing and the editing and the shooting, obviously not in that order. Um, and some of it may not translate to screen in the final um in the final cut. So it's really important to get the opinions of your editor, of your composer. So if something's not obvious to the composer, let's just say, uh, well, this character is hiding a certain pain because of a past relationship. Well, that's something that the composer can put in the music and help the audience to understand a little more. Give the audience some empathy for a character or turn the audience against a different character. These are subtle things. Sometimes when a script um, goes through changes and an edit goes through changes, we, we leave out little pieces and there's a thread that's not apparent to the, the people watching your film and you want them to know it. And music is ideal for filling those gaps and letting the audience know what you want them to know viscerally, emotionally, psychologically. Um, you can't go wrong with this stuff. So it's really important to um, have that moment when your, your composer's watching your film and you can ask them, well, well, what did you think about this? What do you think this character was going through? And you could say, I'm going for this. I wanted this. Um, I want the audience to feel a certain way, to think a certain way. Use lots of adjectives, emotional words, um, descriptive words. Um, you don't have to talk in musical terms, but those places where what you have on screen may not be exactly what you had in your head, and it's going to be, it's going to happen. There'll be many of them. The composer will help you out. The score will help you out. Scores can't save bad films, but they can fill in gaps, and they do fill in gaps. And um, it's a marvelous way to enhance the experience uh, for your audience. So I'm going to go through this list again. First, the music that we like personally may not be appropriate for our film. Two, don't choose the music prematurely. You don't know what this film needs until it's cut, until it's in its um, fine cut or final stages. Even rough cuts can be very deceptive. So be open, be flexible. Don't pick the music before the film is finished. Three, don't choose a composer who's just a musician and they're your friend. Find someone who knows what they're doing. Four, what's obvious to you in your story may not be to the viewer. Keep that in mind and make sure that your team can help you with that. Have discussions. Get feedback about how your um, your composer, your editor, maybe some other folks in the team are, um, are viewing it, who don't have much information um, about the story. They're new to the project, they're a professional, and they can give you a whole bunch of insight about what's coming off on the screen emotionally. I'm not talking about judging it. I'm not talking about critiquing it. I'm just saying, that in order to maximize on the emotion in your film, you want your composer to give you an honest evaluation about what they're getting story-wise, emotionally, um, so that they can give you the best possible score. Thank you for joining me on Film Music Mentor.